Oh, okay. Sorry. Does your mum watch that? He should be editing this out. I don't know. <laughs> hey, welcome to Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. I'm Scott. I'm Del. Um, and what we're doing today is something a little bit different. Um, I don't know if this is a thing in other parts of the world, but in Australia there's this new trend of mini libraries popping up. Uh, they're called street libraries and there is a website, uh, streetlibrary.org.au I think, uh, link in the description, um, where you can find little maps where people put these little almost like bird houses at the front of their properties and they, uh, it's a free library. You go and you take a look and you leave a book. So there's about enough space to put 20 to 30 books in these libraries. Um, and we can't go to normal libraries right now because they're not open. They're not open. So what we're going to do is we're going to unhaul a bunch of books we don't like. Or, or we have duplicates. Or we have or... duplicates or whatever. Um, and we're going to, we're actually filming this at night. Tomorrow morning we're going to go to sleep. We're going to wake up all refreshed and we're going to go on a little bit of a journey and go to all the mini libraries within about 15 minutes drive of us and uh, show and do you... some book exchange. We're going to go through the books that we're getting rid of first so and here's why our we're getting hall. rid of. Uh, we've got Frankenstein. I actually have a beautiful copy of this beautiful edition of Frankenstein gifted to me by a very good friend of mine, Cassie. Um, and so I will be keeping the beautiful hard copy cover and we and will unhaul. That is my version from before we met, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. But someone might read it and get some Somebody out of might it. enjoy that. It was just really boring. I guess the point is not to like offload trash into these. Um, libraries either like it's, ideally books that someone is going to get some value out of reading that's it speaking of trash that is not what <laughs> so the catcher in the right neither of us liked um there's some holden caulfield jokes in some of our descriptions if you haven't noticed yet yeah we don't like it um <laughs> look this is my least favorite book ever and no you didn't like it much either no. Jack Kerouac, on the road. Kerouac, go fuck yourself. Uh, <laughs> this is very harsh. Um, the Twelfth of Never, a memoir by Lewis Nowra. I, I bought this... This is so weird. Louis, Louis, Louis Nowra is a playwright and a, an author. I've not read anything by him, but I've read his memoir. It's a very strange choice to purchase and read. Um, but I, I won't read it again. Um, same with Wall of Pain, The Life of Phil Spector. Um, I read this. I won't read it again. He murdered somebody. Like, we don't need to be... No, it's just not. And it's not a true crime book. Like, it... Uh, and my mum bought me this. Uh, we just... Uh, who needs a book about Bono? Yeah. So that's our unhaul. And tomorrow we're going to drive around and swap them in and see uh, if we can manage to haul a few gems. Or if we end up just donating them to some libraries. Well, it's a cool little program. And I actually think that all of these books, there is a market for somebody. Yeah, I think, I think that the people... Certainly. Will be, like, Bono will get that, read. That'll sure. get read by somebody, Bono. And there's and some Frankenstein's classics. And Frankenstein is quite a popular I, book. You know, it's not... We're not just offloading our trash. Um, so I'm excited to do this as a little experiment. I'd like to convince my husband to put one on our front doorstep, but... But we'll argue about it. Yeah. Oh, we'll see how this goes tomorrow. Fine. Hi. So, we've just been to our first uh, library. Yeah, I made a friend. Scott didn't talk to him. No, I don't, I don't talk to other people. <laughs> um, and we swapped two books. We got rid of On the Road by Kerouac and the Phil Spector book. We did. And now, what two books did we get? Um, we got... I can't reach the other one, um, but we got The Taking of Annie Thorne by C.J. Tudor, which I've never heard of, but it looks interesting. C.J. Tudor, did he write the Delusion, the Dissolution series or something? I'm just going to get that other book for you now. Okay. <sighs> the Chalk Man is the other book by C.J. Tudor, and... On the back it says, if you like my stuff, you'll like this, Stephen King. So, <laughs> that looks like it could be scary. And then um, Emma Donoghue, 
room, which I've seen the movie for, so I have an idea of what to expect. Shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize in 2010. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. I the. Oh wait, what's the say by the Alice Seabol? What? Oh, as compelling as the lovely bones. As compelling as the lovely bones. Yeah, and I think that's true. Um, Jack is five. He lives in a single locked room with his ma. Nice. We actually had quite a few good books that we could select from there. There was Alice in Wonderland, yeah, Jane Eyre. And lots of them like new paperbacks. So these are people who love to read, which is exciting. Um, and um, there was a Ben Elton book too. So we actually, we were only going to get one here. We got two and we really struggled to... Yeah, I, I a little bit was like, oh, should we put all our box, books here and, and then do like a, um, as we go, like a... Like a round robin? Maybe we've been a bit stingy with the books we've given out. I feel like we've won by this swap. I definitely feel like we've won, but we, we gave them a you know a good classic and an interesting biography. No, nobody thinks Kerouac's a good classic. <sighs> so that was a bit of a bust. This library is inside the men's shed in Langwarren and it is locked because of COVID. Uh, it's a bit disappointing because there's meant to be over 200 books in this mini library, which yeah, I was excited about it. Would have given us some choice, but it's a good thing we exchanged two at the last one in Mount Eliza, and now we're driving to Patterson Lakes. Yeah. It's so full. Look at that. Can it you is. see the lights? It's terrible. Is Julian Burnside the? Refugee activist. Yeah, he's like a immigration lawyer type dude. Yeah. Oh, that sounds interesting. Okay. All right, so we got rid of um, two books there. We've had to move on because there was no parking. We parked in a bit of a dodgy fashion to swap the books and then we got out of there. Um, but we've swapped two and we got The Black Death, an intimate story of a village in crisis. Um, that sounds interesting. It says somewhere on this book that it was BBC Four's Book of the Week. <laughs> uh, which starts to sound a bit obscure. Um, I also like that the price on the back is in pounds and the price on the cover is in dollars. Yeah, which, that's nice. Uh, Someone's brought it over. Tells you it's, it's yeah, it's an expat book. <laughs> um, which, yeah, clearly just about the Black Death. And that'll be interesting. The next one, I didn't know this was a book or anything about this. Um, watching Brief Reflections on Human Rights, Law and Justice by Julian Burnside. Um, nobody outside of Australia will have any clue who Julian Burnside is. Julian Burnside is Australia's foremost refugee um, lawyer. He does all of his work pro bono. Um, and he recently joined the Greens Party at the last election and almost outed our federal treasurer in quite a prestigious conservative blue collar seat. Because he's amazing. Because he's, he's amazing. He's a very interesting mind. I'm so excited that we've got this. But, yeah, but he is the voice keeping... I mean, he's, he's trying to hold us Australia's horrible refugee policy to account, and he is... He's doing an amazing job, but, you know... Fingers in the dam. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I mean, he's losing the battle, but he's... At least he's fighting the battle, you know? Yeah. Um... But yeah, so um, reading this will be super interesting. Um, if you don't know who Julian Burnside is, check him out. He, he is incredible. All right, we've just done our last two, haven't we? Yes. That was good, we had a lovely chat. Uh, we met this lady here who insisted we take more books than we give, which was lovely, so we got... But she had boxes and boxes. People obviously contribute to this. It's such a lovely little community thing. So, what have so we got? We got American Rust. Now, who's Philip Mayer? I don't know, this is um, a first novel. Oh. Uh, the Sound of Things. I thought Philip Mayer's name, but it might be a similar name that rings a bell. Yeah, uh, it's sort of promoted as Americana, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, John Irving, A Widow for One Year. It's John Irving, we got that 
just because he wrote a prayer for Owen Meany and that's a good book so we give him a chance at another book. And then The Once and Future King. So the classic there by T.H. White. It's obviously the retelling of King Arthur, written in I think the 30s or something. I don't know. I'm going off memory. So we've got some up. fatties, which is good. Yeah, then that looks like the whole series of A Once and Future King, not just the first book, just I the imagine. First. Yeah, it says the complete edition, so that does sound complete. Hey, I'm thanks. excited. This was really fun. I really enjoyed like just driving around and looking at other people's books. <laughs> right. So this is us. We're in Chelsea now, uh, and now we're going to go home, and we'll probably do a quick wrap-up of this at home. Yeah. See you soon. Oh, all right. We're back. We're back. Uh, if you can hear crying in the background from our dog, that's exactly what it is. He's fine. He's, fine. He's yeah. just beaten regularly and not oh, given any food. Don't even joke. That's not S funny. Sorry. Um, so we just did our little street library tour. Let's, yeah, we're going to wrap up what we got, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so we went to four libraries? Five libraries, but one was closed. Three of those libraries were literally in somebody's front yard or nature strip. Uh, one of those libraries was a church. Oof, now. And the closed one was in a men's shed. Um, yeah. So, um, so these are the only two boxes that we didn't show you while we were on the road. Um, so let's show you those first. Um, this one, which you chose. So this is um, Limberto Ecchio's The Name of the Rose. I've not read any Humberto Ecchio, but he looks like the sort of writer that... He's definitely somebody on my radar that I want to try. Um, and, um, yeah, I'll be happy to, to give it a shot. And then I picked um, a, a, the George Eliot book, Adam Bede. This is something that I've read, and it's one of uh, Eliot's better And I haven't books. read any Eliot, so I'm excited to give that a go. Um, okay, so at our last stop, uh, we got American Rust. And we know nothing about this book at all. It looks like a bit of Americana. They're comparing it to A Mice and Men. Um, Essentially, the lady wanted us to take more books than we gave. And uh, so we picked this one. She definitely seems to have a growing collection. And I think she started the street library in order to get rid of her unhauls. Um, I love this idea of the street library. It looks so much fun. And I'm going to spend some time convincing my husband that we should have one on our front lawn. Now I look like a prick when I don't want one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are. Um, the Once and Future King. So the classic, that's, you know, the retelling of the Arthurian legend um, written in the 30s. Uh, and then John Irving, A Widow for One Year. So we'll see if Irving is as good as, um, as Owen Meany, essentially. Then... Uh, and then... From one of the little ones, we got The Black Death. So it's a, it looks like a non-fiction book about... Um... The fun thing about this is we didn't stand there and Goodreads our options. Like, we just really... A lot of these are, like, cover... Like, author picks. Yeah, picks. like, we're going on based, based on whether we've heard of the author or the title and then covers and maybe a little bit of what the blurb said on the back. Um, also, you're standing outside of someone's house, which feels initially a little bit awkward. So I didn't really want to like browse the way I would in a in a bookshop, yeah. like where I might spend an hour making a decision. And we had the camera out, taking photographs and so filming, cute. and oh, jeez, the, the awkward life of a booktuber. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, this actually, this was the one in Patterson Lakes. We got this from, and this was really good because they lived in a. In, in some units, there was three three houses on the block, and it was out the front. So um, it did feel much more. We didn't secluded. feel, even though it was like so out in the open, and all yeah, the, it was really quite. It felt a little bit tucked in. Tucked, it crammed in, but it, it felt like we could uh, have a bit of anonymity in our shopping, shopping. Um, so this is the Julian Burnside book we got. Julian Burnside, of course, is the humanitarian lawyer who fights all of Australia's inhumane, cruel and barbaric uh, refugee laws. And he's someone that both of us um, respect uh, uh, for his intellect and his values. So reading his book is an exciting thing. 
Um, and then our first stop um, at the Little Pink Library, which is actually featured on Street Library's Instagram, I saw today. Oh, really? And yeah. Um, we got Room by Emma Donoghue, who... Um, that's that's quite a well-known one, and it's now a movie. Emma Donoghue wrote a bunch of other books, frog music and other ones that my brain's not recalling at the moment. Um, and then The Taking of Annie Thorne by C.J. Tudor, which looks like it might be a bit horror, thriller oriented. This one, though it's quite big, it looks like it'll be easy. An to, easy read, so I'm interested to, to see how that goes. Um, I, I haven't read much horror slash thriller stuff in my sort of renaissance of reading yet, so I'm interested to see how that goes. I used to read quite a lot of crime and true crime and thriller based things. It's not so, a genre I tend to go for either. I'm not, I've got nothing against it, I just no, don't tend to read I, it. No, I, I did enjoy reading um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the first three books of that series. Um, Yes. So I'll be interested to sort of see how I go with something like The Taking of Annie Thorne. And even Room is a little bit... It was really good, this, because we've actually... There's a bit outside of our comfort zone. We've gotten some classics. We've got some quite new ones. But we've taken, you know, uh, you know, eight or so books off our bookshelf that we don't even notice are missing, um, to be honest. And we've gotten a whole bunch of new books, and it, it's cost us a bit of petrol. Yeah, and like this one by John Irving, that would not be the next John Irving I would pick to read, but we have it now, um, and uh, you know it'll it'll give us a bit of a different experience that we would have had otherwise. And sometimes those little curveballs that life, those randomness that life throws you. Yeah, sometimes yeah. they're the best books. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, accidents. I definitely, having not read any of these books, I definitely think that I, I would do this activity again. Um, I like us taking books and contributing to them as we are doing a bit of a swap rather than a borrow, because that makes me feel like it doesn't matter if it takes me 12 months to read this book. And the community is very open and says, you know, you don't have to worry about swapping and you don't have to worry about how long it takes and all that sort of stuff. But, but I do think that if everyone was not conscious, then the, there'd be no books there to borrow. So I really, I, it's such a lovely thing. I'd like to feed it. Yeah. And it was, it was interesting to see the, the one at the church had the most books, but honestly, to to be honest, that it was a bit off shopping. It was it was all horrible. It was a we, lot of. It took us a while to find some that we. We really had wanted. to dig through to find uh, a couple of good books. Whereas in the other ones where there was only Quality. twenty to thirty books, it was actually really hard to narrow that choice down. Um, yes. Um, and and the lady that we spoke to who ran the last one was like, what she does is she goes through all the covers and she's you know anything that's broken and damaged she doesn't. Put in there, and she has a she has this lovely little cabinet. Then underneath the cabinet, she has this plastic yeah plastic storage box. box. Well, so many more books. Um, and she's like she she said she grades them. Yeah. Um, and then she had a whole bunch of um, ones that were recently dropped off, and that's the ones that we that's, ended up selecting from. Yeah. Which is probably how it works. Like you know, <laughs> the, imagine that the better known titles don't last uh, as long. Uh, I guess, but. Also, we were standing there chatting to her, and that's where that box was. Like, yeah, we, I didn't actually have uh, as thorough a look at the the beautiful box that she had on display. Um, but it was it was good. It was good to talk to people who read. It was good to. It was interesting because we yeah we got talked chatted to at two. Yeah, I thought it would be quite a solitary thing, but it actually it wasn't. It, it was really nice. Um, and in these, you know, plague-ridden times. <laughs> uh, yeah, everyone kept, you know, enough of a distance, but we got to have a conversation with someone new, and and it was lovely. So, um, I don't know, is this just a thing that happens? It's it's a new phenomenon that's happening in Australia. I don't know, is it, is it happening? I think this has been going on for a while. Like, the website looks very organised, and um, I, I, I think this has been going on for a number of years. Also, do you swap books with your... Uh, 
fellow booktubers that's in something that I would be really interested in talking about doing like postal book swaps and that sort of thing um I haven't quite figured out the nuts and bolts of how it would work but has anyone else d started doing that sort of thing do you send books to your best friend who lives in the country like tell us about how you reuse and um exchange books exchange books yeah yeah all right, well, we've been Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Um, this has been a fun little experiment. We'll let you know how these books go at one of our wraps yeah, later on, I guess, uh, or a review or something. Uh, and remember, ideas are powerful. They're more powerful than library closures. Yes!